This video demonstrates how to implement the sloping agricultural land technology SALT. SALT is a farming method for sloping lands that regenerates depleted soils and controls erosion. It is a package of farming methods for soil conservation and food production. Let's briefly discuss how and why SALT was developed. Increasing population growth in the Hindu Kush Himalaya region has put excessive pressure on land resources resulting in widespread degradation of the land's quality and productivity. This degradation has been problematic on steeply sloping lands which are frequently characterized by poor nutrient availability and erosion. Farmers cultivating such plots need cropping methods that enable them to produce sufficient and reliable yields that will not deplete the resource base they depend on. SALT was developed by the Asian Rural Life Development Foundation in the late 70s to meet such challenges. The SALT cropping method works as follows. Degraded slopes are divided into strips of land for cultivation, which are separated by double hedgerows of nitrogen-fixing trees or bushes planted along the slope's contour lines. On the cultivated strips, farmers grow both permanent and non-permanent crops, providing them with diversified harvests throughout the year. Hedgerows are a key element of the system. They act as erosion barriers and stabilizers for hill slopes. Hedgerows also contribute to soil fertility through nitrogen fixation. The biomass of the hedges is either used as mulch for soil cover and soil moisture conservation or as animal fodder to be recycled back into the soil as compost. There are four main types of salt systems with different areas of focus that include food crops, livestock and plantation crops. In this video, we will show you how to implement the SALT-1 system which focuses on the production of food crops. The first step in starting a SALT plot is to locate the contour lines of a field with a tool called an A-frame. To construct your own low-cost A-frame, simply fix poles of bamboo or wood together in the shape of the capital letter A. For this, you will need the following materials. So we have used three bamboo poles and you'll need strings to tie the bamboo, marker to mark, stones, uh, you need a measuring tape and tools for cutting. Start by cutting the bamboo poles to the required length. You need two poles of two meters and two poles of one meter. Tie the upper ends of the longer poles together with a piece of string. Using your measuring tape, locate the middle point of the poles. Next, connect the two longer poles at these middle points with the two shorter poles. The two short poles are fixed on either sides of the longer poles, acting as a horizontal crossbar. Tie all knots tightly to ensure that the A-frame does not wobble. The last component of the A-frame is a level. We construct a simple level by tying a stone to the top of the A-frame with around 110 cm of string. Next, mark out the middle point of the crossbar. Stand the A-frame up straight on level ground. If the string holding the rock aligns with the midpoint of the bar, your A-frame is well calibrated. In the next work step, we use the A-frame to locate the contour lines of our prospective salt plot. You'll need following materials. A-frame, hammer, strings, and wooden pegs. You'll need approximately one peg per two meters length of contour line. Working as a team of two will make this task faster and easier. While one person operates the A-frame, the other marks the located contour lines with stakes. First, we study our plot and identify its uppermost boundary. We'll start marking out the contour lines from there. Place the A-frame on the ground starting from either side of the plot. Without moving its rear leg, lift its front leg. Level the front leg on the ground with the rear leg.
Monitor the stone level. The string that the stone hangs on will align with the midpoint of the crossbar when both legs are on the same level. When this happens, a contour line has been identified. Mark the spot where the rear leg stands with a stick. Continue by placing the rear leg on the spot where the front leg stood before. Adjust accordingly to ensure both the legs are on the same level and mark the new location of the front leg with a stick. Repeat this process until you come to the end of the length of your plot. Tie the string between the sticks that mark out the contour line to visually indicate the location of the line across the slope. Now that the first contour line is located, the next step is to identify the next line downhill. But how far downhill should it be? The spacing between each contour line should be no more than 1 meter of vertical drop. More vertical distance between the contour lines may not be effective in controlling erosion. A simple way of determining a vertical drop roughly 1 meter in height is the so-called eye-hand method. Extend one arm horizontally and move down the slope until the first contour line is at level with the extended arm. The steeper the slope gets, the closer the contour hedgerows should grow. The flatter the slope, the wider the spacing of hedges. On flatter slopes, it is recommended that contour lines be spaced no more than 5 meters apart. This allows the hedgerows to supply enough nitrogen to the soil throughout the cultivated strips. Once all contour lines are identified, we plant two tightly spaced haze rows on each of them. To plant one meter of double haze rows, you will need approximately 20 seedlings or 100 gram of seed of your desired variety. Haze rows in a salt system need to be nitrogen fixing, fast growing and deep rooted. They should also be resistant to repeated pruning. For the Mid Hills area of the HKS region, recommended species include Flemingia macrophylla, Desmodium rensoni, Gleericidia cipium, and Calendria calothiosus. Make sure to select a species that is adapted to your climate and soil. Clear and plow 1 meter wide strips of land along the contour lines you identified. Use the string tied between the sticks as a visual indicator. On the plowed strips, dig two furrows approximately 50 cm apart, one on either side of the string. Plant the furrows with hazel seedlings spaced approximately 10 cm apart. If you plant seeds, sow approximately 50 g per meter in one furrow water after planting. Having subdivided your field with hedgerows, the next step is to plant crops in the spaces between them, referred to as cultivation strips. A salt one farm combines permanent and non-permanent crops. Start by planting permanent crops on every third cultivation strip. Examples for suitable permanent crops include coffee, banana, citrus and similar crops of the same height. Next, plant short and medium term crops in the two cultivation strips between those planted with permanent crops. The shorter term crops provide food and regular income while waiting for the permanent crops to bear fruits. Examples for suitable shorter term crops include pineapple, ginger, castor bean, peanut, mung bean, melon, sorghum, corn and rice. All crop selection should be based on climatic conditions and local preference. As a general rule, plant taller crops on the bottom of the hill to avoid shedding of smaller ones. Shed tolerant permanent crops are the exception to this rule. In case your plot is steep and heavily affected by erosion, leave around half of your total plot area on plot and fallow in the first year of cultivation. The fallow areas will control erosion until the newly planted hedgerows are large enough to take on that function. Fallow areas can be organized as follows. 
Firstly, while planting permanent crops, only clear and dig up individual spots for planting. Leave the spaces between the plants unplowed on this cultivation strip so as to expose less soil to erosion. Secondly, leave every third cultivation strip fallow by only plowing and planting the cultivation strip below the ones you planted with permanent crops. Once the hedgerows are large enough to act as erosion barriers from year to onwards, all cultivation strips can be cleared and plowed completely. Rotate your selection of short-term crops after the first harvest to maintain soil fertility. A good way of rotating is to plant grains, tubers and other crops on strips where legumes were planted previously and vice versa. Regularly apply crop management practices like weeding and pest and insect control as you would in other farming systems. One year after planting, the double hedgerows will have grown in size. Once they are more than 1 meter tall, prune them to a width of 1 meter and a height of 50 cm. Only prune during the monsoon season. Keep the hedgerows dense by replanting where gaps emerge. Pruning ensures that the hedgerows do not shade your crops or excessively compete with them for soil nutrients. The haze clippings can be used for multiple purposes including composting, animal feed or green mulching. To aid terrace formation, regularly gather up stones, big branches and crop residues and pile them up at the base of the hedgerows. After several years, sedimentation processes will naturally lead to the formation of gently sloping terraces on your salt plot.